Alright, hello everybody. We are back again. Tuki here, joined alongside Sin. Thank you for sticking with us again. Match week five, the second to last day here, Sin. Of course, we wrap up this regular season tomorrow. What a way to start it off with that first matchup. And now, we move ahead. It is Granite Gaming taking on ZSC Esports. And we'll take a look at the team and the lineups and everything like that first before giving you guys the updated look at the playoff, uh, potential playoff bracket and, of course, playoff scenarios here so let's get you all a look at the team stats here between these two and i sin honestly you, you ask people at the beginning of the season i don't know if they would have expected the numbers to be this close i mean there are some teams we'll shout out iq for that bit of shade they threw at the preseason captain's poll on twitter a few minutes ago zsc as well didn't get much respect they were projected to finish 14th right now they're just outside the playoff structure uh, granite as well uh, they were up in, I believe, 7th uh, or 6th, or actually, now that I look at it. And, you know, they're a little bit off that pace, too. These two teams are a lot closer than I think a lot of people would have expected coming into the season. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Granite's kind of had, again, bit back and forth. They've had games where they've looked fantastic. Other games uh, where they've looked a bit a bit flat at times. And we'll see which uh, which kind of Granite we see right here. But they got, they got the 8th spot. Not necessarily secure. They have a relatively comfortable cushion right now. But again, if ZSC are able to pull off the double here in this matchup, as we've seen, ZSC has had some big games at big times. Could go a long, long way for them if they're able to do that here against Granite. Get you a look at the lineups for this matchup for ZSC. Uh, a bit of uh, an interesting matchup here, of course. Freeman back in the lineup. Original Sniss at center. I dangled you out on that right-hand side. Tony and Haldim on defense. And it will be a bourbon in the lineup rather uh, than the, uh, you know, the normal goaltender that we see in this particular matchup. That being one Mr. Chich. Uh, for Granite Gaming, it is Ekin, Zobian, Antonio Man, and Furion, and Lamanins. And once more, it will be a Roisto between the pipes rather than than Toomborg. Yeah, so definitely kind of seeming like Granite, at least towards the tail end of the season, favoring Roy Stowe a little bit as they try to, again, sort of find their footing and solidify themselves as that playoff contender. Absolutely. So let's get you a look here at the Battle of the Center's original Snus and uh, Zovi for this particular matchup. And Sin, pretty close, all things considered. That faceoff advantage in Zovi's favor, though. Yeah, and again, that's going to be, could be extremely important in this if it devolves into kind of, you know, a very, very puck possession heavy game. That being said, ZSC are, always have a very, very good counterattack. They've always kind of been scary and that seemingly coming out of nowhere here. And while Granite has been pretty darn good defensively, we do know that Lehmanens likes to try to drive that pr play sometimes. So if he does get caught up the ice, you got to watch out for those wingers. Uh, for ZSC Esports to be able to, you know, kind of create a lot of rush chances going the other way. I mentioned the wingers. Let's take a look at him now. Again, Freeman back in the lineup for ZSC. Now 14 games uh, on the season, solid 19 points. He's next to I Dangled You Out, who, of course, returned to this team for this season. Granite Gaiman with Ekin and Antonio Manon. Sin, who stands out for you here? I mean, it's got to be Ekin. He was, like, the last time we covered Granite, which was, I believe, Monday, Ekin was the guy. He was the guy. He was the one scoring most of the goals. He was really kind of, you know, being able to drive the play, would be the one to, willing to throw that puck on net when they weren't generating a lot of chances. And, I mean, you can see by his shots, 80 shots, 30 more than the next closest player between these four. I mean, Ekin's a guy who likes to score, and he's you know also not afraid to uh, throw those lower percentage shots on net as well. The defensive battle again, Tony and Haldim on defense for a ZSC, Furion and Lehmanens on the other side, and Sin still that goose egg for Lehmanens, or for, excuse me, for Furion in terms of goals, not what we expect from him at all. Yeah, I mean, you know, you definitely expect him to put up a few goals, but uh, at the times, you know, definitely more of a pass first type of defense and more of a puck mover, he's... You know, he'll, he'll throw the puck on net, but he's not always looking to score in that way. You know, definitely kind of more the playmaker uh, sort of guy. And especially when you look over at his partner, Lehman, as you do consider him to be the guy maybe to perhaps be, you know, lower in the zone, getting some goals. And on the flip side, I mean, Tony has seven goals and it's incredibly impressive. But ZSC, they, they have guys like that, guys that just step up in huge situations. And Tony's a guy like that. You know, he's always trying to find himself in those shooting positions. That's something that Granite Gaining is definitely going to have to be conscious of. 
Absolutely. So again, we are looking forward to this particular matchup. One more head-to-head -to, -head to look at here. That, of course, being the battle of the goaltenders, Bourbon, taking on Royston. And sent decent numbers for both of these two, despite not being their team's primary goaltender this season. Yeah, again, Royston has that 80 save percentage, whereas Toonborg was, you know, kind of hovering just under it. So they're going to favor Royston here, as you mentioned, kind of a, an older uh, flex player, uh, formerly on Havu there, now with uh, Granite and, you know, doing pretty good here at the tail end of the season. Has that positive record, a shutout to his name. We mentioned the save percentage and the goals against isn't too bad. And uh, Bourbon on the flip side, I don't think someone that we've actually covered yet. So I'm excited to kind of see how he works between the pipes. Absolutely. So again, with that, everybody, we are just a few moments away from puck drop. Let's get you a look, though, at some of the things that have happened. We'll take a look at the latest results from around the league. Of course, there are still games ongoing. Uh, we just got a result with Havu. Uh, winning in overtime as well, which will not yet be reflected here. But, I mean, Sin, again, we saw the, the battle with Jure Gordon getting three points against Orobro. Conquer gaming a very crucial overtime point to avoid missing out completely in their battle uh, with Feriastad. Still so much to be decided even heading into the final match day. Yeah, it really is. And I mean, Atred's taking it to Northern Ascendancy the way they did gave presents the opportunity to, you know, those teams like Edebro, uh, to kind of work their way out of that relegation position as we've been talking about. And Salo continuing to uh, kind of roll there as well. And, you know, Goons getting getting a point off of Ferlunda also important. You know, again, Ferlunda has kind of been, you know, they haven't been blowing teams out like we maybe think they have. Absolutely. I think we have an opportunity here to look at the standings as well. Fully updated from what I can tell with the exception of the most recent Havu result. They'll now be on 27 games played with 39 points. But Sin, we want to focus there. The top two yet to be fully decided. All Hreds need to do, win one of their last two games and they will walk away with the number one seed, the defending champions that close to locking down that top spot. Sawo guaranteed a top two seed. Again, Hreds will play Havu tomorrow right here, by the way at 145. Actually, it'll be our second matchup of the day, I do believe. So keep an eye out for that one. H-Reds again, one win over Havu, and they will secure that number one seed. We know for Lunda, locked in at three. IQ making the playoffs. Feriastad, who some of you just watched. Of course, we thank them for the host as well. Feriastad, Sin, locked into the playoffs. Seeding still yet to be determined. We know Havu and Goons are in as well. It is now just down to Granite, who, again, we are about to see in action here against CSC, and whether or not they will be able to fend off the pressure from Roots. Of course, we'll get you a look at the updated standings as we continue on, but Sin, it is game time. Granite in the black and yellow. You have ZSC in their road whites, and ZSC uh, taking one of those road white jerseys straight to the penalty box 54 seconds into this game. Definitely not the way you want to start out. That's dangled you out heading to the box. Uh, poke right there that perhaps I think he was aiming, gonna try to aim at someone else, but with the way the pass worked, he aimed uh, uh, towards the next recipient whose uh, feet were right there in front of him. He will be sitting, but a great opportunity here for Granite to start this game off on the right foot. And ZSC almost uh, all but secure and actually basically secure now. They will not face any potential relegation this season. They would take a perfect result here against Granite and Granite to uh, not pick up any points in their last four games. They'd also need a little bit of help to make the playoffs. But for ZSC, second season in Elite, they'll take the security and what a poke check to take away the chance and another shot just wide of the post on the far side. Wraparound bid. Under siege is a bourbon here in the early stages of this game as the Granite power play goes to work. They are still fighting for seeding as well. It's not just securing that last playoff spot. They're hoping to improve their positioning a little bit. They could catch goons in terms of the standing still. But we are back to five on five. ZSC bottom ranked, or at least the 14th ranked PK at a 16. But a successful attempt there. And well, now we'll see ZSC's power play get to go to work, Sin, as it will be a tripping call against the centerman, Zovi. That, yeah, I was a bit careless there from Zovi as he was trying to, 
you know, position that stick, but just not, I, I don't think a great position or a great time to do it. And we'll be headed to the box and all that momentum that they just gathered right there could have, have ground to a halt and maybe be thrown back in their face if ZSC is successful on this power play. Turn over here, Snus for Freeman. Now Tony for Haldim, good block. Still fighting for it, it'll be cleared out by Ekin. Saw Ekin in action not all that long ago. Impressive goal scoring performances. He is his team's leading scorer with 20 goals on the season. Original Snus looking for an option. One timer again fired wide. Second chance off the post. And nearly kept in by Hall Deem. Just not able to hold that line. 35 to go now. And the ZSC power play. Losing possession. Ekin sends it down. And Granite will get a successful kill. See though if ZSC can take advantage of that momentum. The answer is no. Furion able to get that pass out of there. Young know, man and unable to hold on to it. Bit of space here perhaps for Freeman. Self sauce. Good positioning by Furion to deny him, but still fighting for it. Tony at the point. A little bit of trouble. Haldim able to keep that in. Sends it down low. I think it's out the one timer there. Good quick pass. A better shot just a little bit wide. Good save by Royster. Keep that one out. Chances for both teams here in the early stages. That one taken away by Snus, but not able to hold on to it. Dangled the out, nowhere to go. Good movement, Freeman drops it. Tony able to step up, has no help with them though. Can't dangle around laminates. Space here now perhaps for Ekin, bouncing puck, still problematic. Ekin shot stopped. And a big save by Vervin there. Dangerous moments here for both goaltenders. Yeah, absolutely, especially right there as that puck was kind of uh, uh, precariously just sort of bouncing around in the crease right there. Vervin uh, unsure of how he should adjust, but at the end did get back for that Ekin shot and made the save. And off the draw, it is ZSC in control. They try that quick out, bit of miscommunication. They do manage to win the race to the puck. Interesting. Keep your head up, They couldn't gain possession out of it. Big hit there, but down the other way, Zobi, the back skate, loses it. And a penalty was called on that hit. Or not, there was, was a follow-up. There was a subsequent trip. I completely missed that. Yeah, it was Tony in the slot right there. It's oh, easy okay. to miss with that, you know, the, with the, the ton of bodies that was there. But yeah, Stick just gets caught in the leg. So another power play. A lot of special teams work early on here. Granite will be the recipient of it once again. Let's see here if they can make the most of the second opportunity. Looks pretty good on that first power play. Down low scores! Close quarters, strikes again, Antonio Manon finds the back of the net on the power play, one to nothing for Granite Gaming. Beautiful job by Granite, not really wasting any time right there. Puck down low, sneaks that one through the five hole as we see oh a lot um as we see you know oh so often here in the elite division and a you know a little guitar solo there at the end for good measure. Antonio putting his team up one nothing. So a good start here for Granite again as they continue to try and secure that playoff spot. Keep your head Technically up, again, ZSC still alive, Roots gaming as well. That shot deflects away. Not the season I think that Granite was looking to have. 14-10-2, uh, excuse me. Um, heading into the action today for 26 games. Antonio Manon, look for that wraparound. Bourbon able to make the save, plays it out. CSC. We get that counterattack going down the other way. Tony, that shot, gloved down by Royste. And he'll be forced to cover. Solid save right there from Royce with ZSC looking to get a little bit of momentum as, uh, especially after that goal, Granite trying to keep the ice tilted in their favor. Off the draw again, another successful win for Zobi. Ekin unable to dangle past the defense. The opening goal for Granite a few moments ago, Antonio Manon, 15th of the year. That shot, double deflection, Freeman the chance, another chance, Risto. Great save, post to post action, Be able to keep that puck out. Huge saves coming out from Royce right there. I mean, that first one, you know, a bit tough with uh, kind of the way it went in, uh, went towards the net, but that second one especially had to slide over and then get himself on the correct angle to make it. Just 
great, great job by him to keep this game, uh, keep, sorry, keep his team in the advantageous position. Keep your head up, kid. Final minute here in the first period. It's Freeman. There's the pass, that one along. Original Snus bit of space, the kick into the middle, five seconds to go. Turned over, Snus a shot to flex wide. Freeman, not enough time. And that will do it for the opening period again. One nothing. The score, despite uh, the physicality from I tangled you out, that we of course always expect to see. Yeah, and uh, again, that's kind of you know the the identity of ZSC. Definitely one of the more physical teams out there. In fact, the most physical team with 436 hits on the season, which is by far the most and by far more than Granite, who only have 190. They are in fact the least physical team. So look for zsc maybe in the second period to press that advantage a bit more at least press that play style a little bit more see if they can sort of catch granite or at least for knock them off their game a bit I, I feel like we didn't see a whole lot of what zsc's identity was in that first period and i think a lot of that had to do with the uh, back and forth kind of penalty kill uh or just special teams time in general right there as we got another look at that antonio goal sneaking that through the five hole but again another shout out to Royster who had to make some pretty good saves to keep his team up one nothing after that first period so second period we'll have to see what kind of response that ZSC does and if I'm granted I'm gonna want to try to keep my foot on the gas pedal don't sit back against the ZSC team because they will make you pay second period underway here again elite division action here with the ECL brought to you by our friends at Bill Hallman couple on Lacrity shout out as well to ST Hockey Granite Gaming looking to secure that final playoff spot. Big save there by a bourbon to keep that one out. ZSC again mathematically still alive. At the very least, safe heading into our spring season. Which is great news for them in their second season in the Elite Division. And I believe both times projected to go right back down. But no, they have found that Elite Division I guess uh, solidarity is, is the word I was thinking of, but not quite the right word for it. But yeah. again, they've, they've carved out their spot. <laughs> yeah, they absolutely have. You know, ZSC is an elite division team and they've, you know, put themselves in a position to not even really have to, to, to deal with the relegation. If they're able to get some points here, that'll pretty much uh, pretty much do it for that uh, situation. There's Bourbon. Pick that puck up at a bit of an awkward location in his net. When he has it here now for ZSC. Big stretch pass to Captain Original Smith's not able to hold on to that one. Again, one of the things uh, that has always been interesting, of course, is how these home matchups end up playing out. Side dangled you out, not able to get that pass away. Around the back, Hall Deem. Let's see what he can do. Tony's pass. A little bit off the mark again. ZSC entering a play today. Middle of the road in terms of goals for. That pass across, what a goal! Antonio Manon, second of the game. Two to nothing, Granite. And Sin, we're gonna need to see that better offensive output from ZSC in this one if they're gonna get back into it. Absolutely unreal play by Furian right there. And ah, that's the reason why he has the assist count that he does. Just a beautiful, beautiful bit of uh, L skating to uh, open up that passing lane across to Antonio with someone driving the net as well, presenting that threat up front. And Antonio hung, hangs back just a little bit, gets that one time off and beats the goaltender. Two, nothing for Granite. Big result for them again. They don't need much over their last four games to secure that final playoff spot. If they keep playing like this, we will know our eight before uh, we head into tomorrow's broadcast. And a wonderful regular season main event that I hate that I'm going to have to miss, but Sin will be on the call alongside one Mr. B Major covering the likes of, again, H-Reds and Havu. H-Reds get a single. Uh, win out of that out of that set and they will claim the number one seed over Sabo Esports. So on the line here, a little bit of space now perhaps. Shot on, save, rebound, and Furion does a great job to take that one away. And again, he uh, made note of the fact in chat that we said he still didn't have a goal. Furion looking to change that. But Sid, I mean, his reputation precedes him in terms of what we expect in terms of offensive output. 
Yes, this is pass. Haldim still fighting forward as well. Antonio Manning able to take that one away. Laminen stifled as he tried to get that outlet pass. Great four checking pressure for ZSC. And again, causing havoc in the attacking zone. Snus for Freeman. Elects not to shoot. Haldim now at the point. Down low for Dangle Do out. Back for Haldim. Trying to weave his way around, playing with fire, avoiding trouble for now, and it's, in my opinion, a bit too much hesitation and indecision. Yeah, yeah he's got to be, especially with Ekin bearing down on him. Ekin, an incredibly skilled player right there on all sides of the puck, and it was just a matter of time before he was able to force that turnover. This granite lineup features some of the best 1v1 players in the competitive scene as well. Ekin, Laminens, both among them. That puck down low two minutes ago here in the second period. A 2 0 lead for Granite Gaming. Lamonins at least gets that one into the zone. Here's Ekin down low for Zobi. Zobi, the short side, doesn't go. Hit the post. He's pretty well covered by Bourbon regardless. Loose pucks. Snus, nowhere to go. And unfortunately, someone thought they were getting the puck. They didn't. Interference call. Granite back to the power play. Yeah, it's dangled you out again, heading back to the box right there, and kind of a bit interesting. He wasn't necessarily in the greatest shooting location, but, you know, when you get your mind thinking you're going to get that puck and you don't, it can lead to those bumps like we just saw. Okay, loose puck here held in by Furion. Laminins for Antonio has both of his team's goals so far. Final 10 seconds of the second period. Loose puck, saved by Bourbon as it trickled towards goal. Chance there, pass across. Surprise, we didn't see a backhand shot. That will do it for the second. Two to nothing for Granite Gaming as we get a look at Antonio's second goal of this contest. And so far, Granite just looking in complete control, capitalizing on some of their chances here. And ZSC, we just haven't seen what we're kind of used to. We haven't seen them be able to break away, you know, with some of those guys and leaving the zone too soon. I think Fjordan and Lehmannens are doing a terrific job of just completely stifling even the thought of that. And not only that, they're presenting so much threat in that offensive zone that it's tough to be able to kind of want to send someone, uh, you know, out of that zone a bit early. Again, they do have some decent time on attack, but I feel like, you know, they haven't got enough kind of higher quality shots on Royster. Besides that pair that we saw, you know, a bit earlier, I think maybe even in the first period, it's, it hasn't really been a whole heck of a lot uh, coming out from ZSC Esports. And again, it's, what a pretty play. And I think that was Ekin driving the net, presenting all that threat, actually kind of locking down two ZSC defenders. So Freon really had an easy as, uh, as easy as can be pass to make to Antonio to get that second goal in the game. Third period about ready to begin. Again, the first game of two between these two clubs. Both moving towards playing their 28th, or yeah, 27th, and then eventually, of course, 28th game of this regular season. 30 games before we head to the playoffs again. Granite right now very much looking like they will secure that final spot. Technically, still contest goons heading into tomorrow's action if they walk away with all four points here. The space, that rocket pass from Ekin doesn't go. We are back to five on five, but there will be an icing call here. The face off coming up in the ZSC zone. Once again, ZSC just kind of struggling to really find their bearings here in the third period where they desperately need to, already down by two, and Granite looks to want to pour even more on. Off the draw, Antonio nearly coming up with that one. Does get the puck back. Hands off for Ekin and gets it back one more time. Not able to maintain possession here. Virginal Snus trying to avoid that double team pressure. Can't hold on to it. Zobi shot, rebound, nearly found its way to Ekin. He got a piece of it, just not enough. Aldeem has it now. See what Tony can do. Freeman not able to handle the puck at the line, at least in stride with his teammates. It's another offside call against ZSC. That's, yeah. <laughs> Again, the second ZSC looked to maybe be getting some momentum, an offside or, you know, a turnover. They just really can't seem to get the ball rolling here. That shot, again, doesn't find its way through. And, of course, in, in uh, our previous coverage of Granite, we 
I had no shortage of, of rock-related puns, but I think that has been Granite's uh, MO so far here today, rock-solid defense. Absolutely. I mean, really, there's no time, there's no space for ZSC to be be able to do what they want to do. And Granite, with that two-goal lead, obviously going to still look for offense. They don't need to force anything at this point because of the way they've been defending. This puck heads down into the corner. Tony able to handle it well. Dangled you out, trying to go to original Snows. He is able to recover, but again, just not able to hold on to that puck for that extra bit of time. But they need to try and establish something offensively. Freeman. Nowhere to go along that half wall. Three on one chance. Evaporates off of that errant pass. Timed well on the dump and chase. Back to the point. Haldi and Fratoni. That wrister. Not what they needed. Let's see what Ekin can do now going down the other way. Has a couple options. Goes down low for Antonio. Man in the front. They score. This time it's Zobi. Posted up in front was the centerman. Three to nothing for Granite Gaming over halfway through the third period. That's just an absolute gift of a pass coming out from Antonio. Beautiful work right there. As you can see, uh, the fenceman slide over to try to take the post away. The other one could not get back in time to cover Zovi. So he was left all alone in the low slot. The last place you want to leave a player. And because of that, Granite Gaming taking a three goal lead. 16th goal of the season for Zobi. And remember here, Sin, and I do believe he, uh, yeah, was the one of the rare few to stay with Granite Gaming after the uh, changes that were made. Toomborg was technically there last year, only played, you know, a third of their games. Of course, this team, uh, previously known as Vesa Pampa, underwent quite a few changes over the last couple of seasons. Right back in form and again looking to be a playoff team. But boy, what a reward for making the playoffs if you get to play either our defending champion in H-Reds or Asawa Esports in the first yeah. round. All the shot is blocked. Dangled you out. Has it now. Tries to go to that short side post. Nowhere to go. Back to the point. It's Tony. In that low cycle. Snus, good job weaving his way into the slot. Space shot, and it's in! Great job by the defender, Hall Deem, to step up and sweep that one in. ZSC on the board with five and a half to go. Yeah, that was their right defenseman all the way on their left side of the ice down low, but it worked out for him. Nice bit of a uh, nice bit of puck work by ZSC, working that around, then getting a shot on net and have people crashing the net. Hall Deem. Getting a massive, massive goal here. Time is a factor. However, they still have two goals to make up. 5.30 left. It is possible, but it's desperation time for ZSC. And you never know with how this season has gone. This game could be far from over. Tony has that one poked away. Hey, another victory for Havu, as reported by Estor there. One of these days, we need Estor as our man between the glass during these broadcasts. Yeah. <laughs> Just throw it to him whenever he has an update. <laughs> it is an opportunity here, perhaps, for Ekin, surrounded by almost every single member of the opposition. Spraman forced to dump that one in. Smart move. He wasn't going to get that open space cleanly. Good hit there by Original Snooze. That shot fired just wide. Hasn't been the worst performance from ZSC. What a hit there. Good lord. <laughs> Unfortunately, Granite just being able to make the most of those chances. Over the line. Zobi has a goal in this one. Not able to hold on to it. Battling Haldim, though. Dangled you out. Has the final 45 seconds to go. Again, the first game of two between these two teams as Granite. Going to be looking that much more likely here. And if not, uh, they haven't already been very, very close to securing that final playoff spot. At least getting us to know exactly who the eight will be that will be competing in our playoff format here in our spring season. That one blocked away with 20 seconds to go. Angled you out, nowhere to go. Recovered by Antonio Mann in two goals. And right now the game winner as it stands. 10 seconds to go. Granite Gaming picking up a very important two points. As they again 
will likely be heading towards the playoffs. A save by Bourbon at the end, but too little too late. Three to one, your final score here in this first game. Yeah, that was the push from ZSC. It just was a little too little, too late. And Granite, you know, was the better team for the majority of that. And I like it. They didn't necessarily ever get caught defending, caught in a defensive lull, as we kind of saw last uh, last time we covered this team. I think it was against HV71 or perhaps Jurgon. I can't remember exactly, but they, yeah, they kind of got caught a couple times in a lull defending. And I, I like that they didn't do that. They tried to stop this team at the blue land as much as they can, could to transition themselves and then establish in the offensive zone. That's a big reason that they came away with a three to one victory in this one. Just a very, very complete game coming out from Granite. And a big result for them as well. Pushes them up to 32 points on the season. And in looking at Roots, 33 is the max they can get. So, Sin, I think it's fair to say Granite Gaming playoff bound. We have our eight that are going to make it. Heading into tomorrow, it makes the, uh, the relegation spots that much more interesting for that particular broadcast. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's... Again, kind of coming down to the wire still in a lot of areas, even though with that win, the, the playoff bracket uh, besides seeding seems all but sort of solidified there. Uh, but we'll see. Again, you know, ZSC, they can win this next game. I, I still think it's too far out of reach, at least for them to make it. And I know Roots is a point ahead. Again, Granite would pretty much need to lose out and other teams would need to win out, but it's, I think, it's still mathematically possible, but um, yeah, very unlikely. Point, at this point, it's it's Roots, right? I mean, they yeah. had, uh, for, for ZSC, they would have had, like I said, to, to have won both of these games over Granite, but uh, for ZSC, at the very least, uh, they are still competing. Like, they're not completely safe heading into the action yeah. tomorrow. Uh, again, we will have the full update for you all in terms of the standings as they may be. It is a constantly evolving situation, as I'm sure you all know. We're trying to keep you updated as best we can, and it's one of the most interesting aspects of these end of regular season broadcasts as we just wait to see how these pieces are going to fall into place. But again, a 3-1 victory for Granite Gaming in Game 1 over ZSC Esports. Game 2 coming up in just a matter of moments. We're going to leave you here for a, a brief word from our lovely sponsors, and we'll be back for our final game of the night. Minkä päällä lakukastike maistuu parhaalta? Ei voi tietää, ellei kokeile. Kouvolan lakritsi. All right, everybody, again, we are back. A big thank you for sticking with us. A big thank you again to Wilhelm, Como Lockerty, and ST Hockey for sponsoring the ECL this season. So, Sin, we are now in the situation where some teams have already finished uh, their mm -hmm. regular season campaign, 30 games played. Uh, some teams, of course, I mean, uh, YMCA perhaps most interesting, just kind of waiting to see what's going to happen with them. But for these two teams in particular, like we said, granted here, I mean, a point basically does it. Two points guarantees like they are playoff bound. But like we said, they are finishing seventh or eighth at this stage, which means already you are having to look ahead if you are granite towards Hreds or Sawo. Not a fun situation to be, yeah. but hey, at the very least you made the playoffs. But we've seen up we've seen upsets before, but needless to say, now you're kind of if you're one of those teams, you're starting to look at like, oh God, this is this is who we get to play, huh? And there might be excitement surrounding it, but at the same time, you also realize like, okay, yep, this is uh this is an uphill battle. Yeah, there's that mental edge that some of those top teams have, especially when you're the defending champions as H Reds are, so yeah. yeah, I would say you never mean me never afraid really of anyone, but you know, going into a series like that can be tough. But then again, sometimes going into a series with nothing to lose, you kind of find a different level of play and kind of shock yourself uh, to what you're able to do against a team that good. Absolutely. So again, after this result, we'll get you guys the full update of the standings before uh, tomorrow's broadcast, where again, Sin uh, will be in the driver's seat for that one. Oh my God! He can do play by play. He can do play by play better than me. Just don't, just don't, <laughs> just don't let that. 
don't, don't let that change happen. But Sim, we get a look here at the teams in the lobbies, and again, a little bit more of Magnetic. I'm not surprised, of course, to see I dangled you out with Truculence. Yeah. He is someone. By the way, hey, we got a power forward. <laughs> <laughs> As hey! we saw out earlier in the broadcast, we do have a power forward, but that totally fits his play style. He's a wrecking yeah. ball out there. Why would Absolutely. you want to be a puck moving defenseman with the lead edges? As you get a look at who will be there, again, not commentary by me. Sim will take over on that one, but again, ZSC Esports will take on Feriostad, and we round out this regular season with Havu against H Reds, and again, H Reds needing just a one win in that last uh, set of games to secure the number one seed as our defending champions from last season. It's been an incredible run from them, but who would have thought their biggest competition in terms of points would have been Sabo Esports this season? Crazy. Yeah, tough to sort of uh, predict something like that, but uh, again, always expect the unexpected here in the Elite. Oh, here we go. The action is underway. CSC, of course, the home team in this one. Always plays a little bit of a factor in the home blues, granted in the road whites. Again, the final game of this particular broadcast. We thank you all for joining us here today and supporting the competitive NHL esports scene. Needless to say, competitive. I mean, it almost goes without saying at this point with how we have seen the ECL Elite Division play out this season. And ZSC still vying for some very important points. And there is an early penalty called against Granite. So we will see ZSC go to the power play. Mistimed at the line. Didn't see what it was for. Obviously, when someone's missing their bucket, the bump, in, you know, it was a hit. Yeah, I think it was a bump in the neutral zone. Yeah, right there. Um, it was Antonio trying to get back in the play. Thought he might get the puck or someone else might get the puck. Went for a hit. Will be sitting for interference. Two goals for Antonio Manon in that opening game. Let's see what will happen here on the ZSC power play. Losing the opening draw. Lehman is able to clear that one all the way down to a Bourbon's left. Haldim chases it down, gets things going. He also had a goal in that first game. And again, Freeman lost all forward momentum. This one offside call. Not quite what they would have been looking for. Yeah, ZSC kind of uh, battling with themselves right now at the blue line, which is not what you want, especially on the power play. Just kind of goes to show you how good Granite has been uh, at the blue line in the last couple games. Good movement there. That pass from Freeman might have had the ability to shoot, but again, uh, pass first league at times. This puck into the corner, 40 seconds to go on the man advantage. Haldim all over the place. Here is Tony at the point. Finds original sniffs down low, gets it back, and again down low. That one-timer, great look. But unfortunately, a swing and a miss on the shot attempt, and we'll be back to five on five. It was a great job by Ekin of getting in the face of that puck recipient, or pass recipient right there. Just excellent defense. This puck. Stifled before it could be sent down. Oh, deflection bid for Dangled you out. He still has it. Couldn't pull the trigger on a follow-up shot. Buck down low and around. Furion turns it over. I Dangled you out. What a save on the shot from Snus. Great stop there by Royston and a delayed call coming up against ZSC. Sitting a little bit too aggressive and trying to keep that possession alive. Yeah, and uh, very, very similar to how we started the uh, the last game. It's uh, a couple penalties early on. You can see that stick. Very rare you see a hook coming out from someone who's in front of the player they're hooking. But we just saw it right there from Hal Deem. He will sit in the box, and Granite will have their chance on the power play. We win the draw. Laminin's nowhere to go. He was bumped off the puck. And a 3-1 win for Granite in that first game. Richland Snus takes that one down. Shot off. <laughs> you never know. Royce, though, <laughs> forced to, uh, I mean, that was that was a shot and a half in terms of the zip that thing had. Royce, though, had to be careful. We've seen crazier things happen. Well, we got word from Estor that we had a goalie goal today. Not quite from Inet. It was a six on five, but Hanselino, of all people, scoring. Imagine that sin as a <laughs> former winger, of course, for Havu. A big save there from Bourbon and a good poke check to deny his second chance for Antonio Manon. Job by Tony to be able to clear and a good shot there as well by Freeman. Drives it in open space. We're back to five on five. Yeah, wake me up when a goalie scores, you know, for as a goalie. <laughs> what we're looking for. 
I mean, Mike Smith is still rocking that as a claim to fame. So, I mean, you score that, you'll be a legend for the rest of you, you know, for the rest of uh, the ECL's existence. Yeah, I think it would be a first for, well, at least for, you know, in all our time covering it. Potentially, maybe even a first. It's got to be pretty hard to do. An interesting moment there for Royston. Feminins gets that pass up to Zovi. Puck handled. ZSC trying to get something going back down the other way here. Dangled you out over the line. Hall Deem, again, playing with fire. Now we're getting rid of that puck fast when Ekin's around. And here is Ekin on that left-hand side. He gains the line. Antonio Mann and pass across. Zovi, bit too much traffic to deal with. A lot of trouble here for ZSC trying to get that puck back. Furion at the point, circles back, goes down low for Antonio Mann and Ekin. Nobody home on the pass. And it's ZSC now going down the other way. Back skating from original Snus to the point. Haldim shot, paddled away by Arroyo. He's been called upon a few times here in this first period. <laughs> so a massive hit from Dangle Dew out. As always. Not able to maintain puck control here, though. And the train just, uh, just missed its intended target there. Freeman trying to get something going down the wing. Laminance. Handled easily. He gets it back. Pass across broken up. Furion at the point. Slap shot blocked. What? And Laminance, I thought that might go in down the <laughs> so other side. I. That oh looked like it was on target. <laughs> a mini heart attack for Roisto. Got a couple of those moments in this period. Final few seconds. Original Snus can't clear. Antonio Mann, and it's broken up by Snus. And that will do it for the first period. Stunning that we didn't have a goal in the opening frame. Yeah, either uh, a goal or an own goal was how some of those things were getting, but uh, maybe deservedly so. Dangled you out, getting a bit of a highlight package here for his massive hits that he was laying out for in that period. And, I mean, like we said, we, he was just running around laying... Uh, Throwing his weight around as he usually does. No uh, no score in that, but you can see from there's a couple close calls. Yes, he had some good chances, especially down low. Either Royster was turning them aside or they were missing the net. And, you, you know, it's hard to say who the clear advantage was in that period. But both teams kind of with some chances. But, you know, shot advantage right now in favor of ZSC. And uh, with that home ice sort of uh, advantage, definitely uh, helping them out. Wow. We just saw a knob safe. I mean, <laughs> one of the saves of the year, in my opinion. That's outrageous. Unbelievable. Not too oft. Sin, I mean, let, we didn't even talk. notice it. <laughs> no, we didn't, and that's because you wouldn't expect it. And let's be honest, yeah. for all the moments in this game, and look, you know, it's one of those things we don't try to point out too many negative aspects of the game, but let's be honest, we've all seen goals that have gone through equipment, and for a save with the knob of the stick to be effective, it, it catches you off guard. Yeah, absolutely. Second period underway here. Let's see who will find the opening goal of this game. And it was nearly Freeman posted up in front. Freeman again still fighting for it. Snus as well. Freeman not able to get a stick to it. Big stretch pass. Good contact there to take it away. Aldimna loses it to Antonio. Zobi's chance still bouncing around off the back of the net now. Great job there by Zobi to keep it alive. Wrap around taken away. You see, we'll look to reset here, Tony. Over for Haldim. Gains the line, but of course, Ekin is there. Sin pointing out the solid defensive efforts that we see from Ekin, and that's one of the things that makes Granite so dangerous as a defensive unit. Both wingers, very solid defenders of options. That shot blocked. Layman is able to handle it. Carry on, looking to lead the way here. Takes the hit from Dangled you out, but fortunately, at least for the moment, his team able to kind of help him out. Good layers in defense from Granite, as you expect to see. Furion's having a rough couple of minutes here. There's the chance for Ekin, and a big save. Zovi fired one sin. That might have been another stick save by Bourbon. The bouncing puck there. Layman will touch it up for icing. Wow. Interesting start <laughs> to this period. 
Absolutely, you're seeing the physicality from ZSC as we expect, but that time it didn't couldn't turn the defense in the offense as Granite Gaming got some really good chances down low. Off the draw, it is ZSC in control. So just one goal to show for it. For about four and a half periods of play against Granite. And to get something going here, of course, they are in that situation where a little bit unlikely, but not impossible, that they, uh, again, based off of the results we have here, I don't know if the Northern Ascendancy results have come through, but it's an interesting situation for them regardless. Stangle you out, takes the hit. Good shot, good save. Roy still able to come up clutch there. Zovi drop pass for Antonio, gets it back. Zovi again trying that sneak in front of the short side. Antonio for Zovi, he scores! It's in nearly an identical goal to what we saw in that first game. one nothing here for Granite Gaming. Yeah, Granite kind of loves that, you know, the down low cycles, trying to find those quick, in tight passes in front. And, I mean, it's... Uh, yeah, almost. Yeah, I would honestly say that is pretty identical, despite the fact I think that was Ekin getting the pass off to him. But yeah, just uh, again, kind of surreptitious, surreptitiously positioned himself in that low slot, goes undetected, and granted, I had one nothing. Yeah, good result for them there as we continue on halfway through the second period, and Granite gonna look to add Antonio nearly picking that corner. Would have been a great moment for them. Double up this lead. This frame and drops back for Tony. His shot blocked down. Good job to disrupt that counter breakout, but Freeman's pass off the mark. And here's Zovi. They have the numbers. Ekin across, shoveled on by Fury. <laughs> so close to that first of the season. And another chance by Ekin doesn't go. Freeman taking the hit. Very physical matchup that we have here between these two teams. Zekin nearly moving his way through on the doorstep. But Bourbon's able to find that one. Yeah, and here come Granite. They kind of got that first goal. The game's starting to open up, and they're really starting to pounce on everything. Uh, that hit from Lehman this was absolutely massive. Again, not a very overly physical team in Granite, but when they hit, it can really, really turn the tide. Still in the attacking zone here. Zobi not able to hold it. Dangled you out. Stretch pass for Freeman doesn't go. Not much for ZSC in terms of offensive pressure in the past few minutes here. Aldean. Pressured there by Ekin, who has only made his presence more felt as this game's continued on. Good save there on the shot by Antonio Manning. Urban bit under siege once again as Granite are starting to hem in ZSC and that just doesn't bode well for them. Almost out of the second period, they still looking for that first goal and they're having trouble, you know, finding the back of the net against this Granite team. Chance there again, just not able to come to fruition. Ekin on the back skate, drives the net, handled well by Dangle the out. That shot just wide. That'll do it. For the second period, Sin Granite, right where we expect them to be at this point, but not for a lack of effort here from Bourbon as he'll make, uh, well, not as much of a spectacular save compared to what we saw in the first period. Yeah, we saw quite a few from him, and on the other side, Royston has been having to make some saves. Maybe he's not quite used to making uh, several of them from the other side of the ice. He's, you know, no. If you're a goaltender, sometimes I don't know, maybe put down your controller when the puck's in the offensive end, kind of, you know. Get, give a little stretch, uh, crack your knuckles a bit. I don't think Roystos put that down once with what's happening in this game with how uh, crazy those uh, pucks are coming at him from uh, pretty much the, all the way across the ice. But again, this game is sort of feeling like it's flying by and ZSC, uh, it's, that just is not good for them. They they haven't been able to get the offense. They're, they're kind of giving up some of the same chances that they did before, as you saw it right there. And that was Antonio. I guess it was Antonio again behind the net who uh, circled out front and passed it to Zovi. Nice little bit of uh, edge work there. As you kind of you see that often when people get the uh, puck with their uh, kind of faces against the boards, they'll kind of fake one way, go back the other way. It's a really good way to create some space and get some momentum uh, moving to uh, some open ice. You can uh, make a pass. There we go. Third period underway. 
Yeah, 1-0 lead for Granite Gaming. And goal again from Zovi. 17th of the season. A little bit of trouble there. Good forecheck and pressure again from ZSC. Just not able to come up with the puck, though. Big stretch pass. Nice job using the puck job to take that one away. Lamb and ends. Playing with fire here. Freeman not able to get it on side. Roisto forced to kick that one. He'll play it out. Again, just one goal for ZSC now through five periods of play against Granite. There's a late one as well from Paul Dean. Delivers the hit there to Ekin. Tony Amanit still has it. That pass in front just off the mark. Here's Fury on that shot block. Second chance deflection bid stopped by a Bourbon. Yeah, interesting seeing Lehman ends up there. I think he was the one to actually get the deflection as well. At least that's the interesting part. It's no, no, it's not a foreign sight to see Lehman jumping in that play and remaining down there almost as like a fourth forward. Is ZSC in possession, but a penalty is called. Granite going to the power play. Another interference call here against Daniel Dio. Yeah, interesting. It was a little shove. I almost thought yeah, the person who came up behind him could have been interference on that person, but it must not have uh, activated the uh, the hitting uh, the hit stick, essentially. So, thank you out sitting once again. I think that's his third penalty he's taken in this matchup. Off the draw, loose puck poked ahead towards Freeman, but again, Lehman is there to take that one away. Good contact there from Freeman, but again, not able to get possession. And noted ZSC entered today with the 14th ranked penalty kill out of 16 teams, of course. Granite with the 10th rated power play. So neither of these teams quite where they want to be in terms of the special teams effort so far this year. Pass off the mark. Freeman unable to make a play. There's Laminens now for Ekin. Laminens again. Round the back. The drop low for Zobi. Wins it back. Laminens. Chance again. Just to the wayside. We're back to five on five. Tony O'Mannon nowhere to go. That pass in front attempt. Has it back here. Bourbon able to make the save. And he will cover for the face off. Time's a factor. And that's, I think, the biggest uh, enemy right now of ZSC is the time on the clock. And they simply... All they need is one goal, but I don't think we've seen too many high danger scoring chances out of them in this game, and certainly not any in this period so far. They're just completely being stifled and shut down by Granite, who, you know, are playing good defense at the line, as you see right there, forcing the offside. Not only that, getting the puck out quickly, not allowing ZSC to sustain. And then, you know, sometimes best defense is a good offense. Granite has been able to find the time to cycle in the zone of, Z of ZSC and chew up precious seconds off that clock. Halfway now through this third period. Here's Ekin, burst of speed, breakaway, scores! Just like that, two to nothing in favor of Granite Gaming as Ekin gets on the board. The team's leading goal scorer, the team's leading point producer. I'm pretty sure he's even ahead in assists as well. Ekin, what a play right there. That burst of speed was ridiculous. A sick pass to st stretch it all the way up to him and he just goes full speed mode, cuts across the goalie on the forehand, and buries it. With the way this game has gone, it's hard to see ZSC being able to get back into it, but never say never. They have half a period to work with. It's time to throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. And still just one goal for ZSC in this matchup. With nine minutes to go, they now need two. Sovi trying to make things happen, rushing down the middle, nearly came up with it. Ekin could move the game along, not the game, the zone, I should say. A peek over the blue line, Antonio Manning right back to him, and a wraparound gone, might have been an empty net to shoot at. Seven minutes to play now. Here is Haldi. And just nowhere to go. Or is ZSC once they do gain the zone? This one sent back and sent right now. I mean, the game plan for Granite just kind of see this one through, I'd imagine. Yeah, absolutely. You know, don't have to force anything. Take your time with it. Make sure you're playing solid defensively. Close in tight passes unless you see a very, very clear stretch one. But don't need to risk anything. And again, knocked back to the neutral zone. But ZSC 
Rapidly running out of time. Laminates. Round for Antonio Mann in that wraparound bid. Nearly found the back of the net. Zobi tangled up. Couldn't get that pass in front. Freeman again just nowhere to go. Incredible defense here. And I mean, Sin talking about the matchup that we expect Granite to have. I mean, if they can play defense like this, who knows what might happen in the playoff scenario. Absolutely. We uh, were all shocked by what happened in the championship when H-Reds played a near-perfect defensive style. And granted, this is, you know, ZSC, but Granite has just looked phenomenal so far. Final minute of the play. One more offside. And we... We'll wait to see the result of this one. It looks like it is a foregone conclusion at this stage, but you never know. As Sin, we do have the updated numbers here with this win. Granite officially in the playoffs. A maximum of 30 points now that Roots could hit. Granite already secured with that first win, but officially we know our top eight, and Granite is a part of the playoff structure. Again, we'll give you all the full update on these scenarios heading in to tomorrow's final broadcast. Don't go anywhere here upon the conclusion of this game. And of course, as always, sportsgamer.gg for the updated information as well. Again, heading into tomorrow's regular season finale. A trip is called there and we'll have a late granite power play. Yeah, and that'll pretty much spell the doom here for ZSC. It was looking grim, but at this point it may just look completely out of reach as the desperation got the better of original Snus there. And he will sit in the box, and we'll see if Granite went on to try to pot one more in the back of the net here. And goal differential always playing a factor. That one is cleared out, however. Pass there, Furion, so close! To the first goal of the season. How snake bitten is this man? He wants it so bad right there, and unfortunately unable to get it. That was a beautiful play right him, uh, right there to to Furin, just kind of sneaking in the pass made. It. He just couldn't get the shot off cleanly. As it again, the shot scores. It took until game number 28, but Furion has his first of the season here on the power play. And that's a moment where you wish you could be inside these guys' heads and in their comms just to hear what they're saying to Furion right now. What a shot, a blast as he creeps in from the point. Nice pass from Lehman and getting him onto that forehand. That looked like a play for Furion there to have him take another shot at it. Well, you know, the drought is over. He's got his goal on the season. Another penalty called against ZSC. You know, I had looked at Furion's numbers, Sin, and I mean, there's a guy who gets typically about four, at least four goals a year. Last ECL, uh, ECL 8 was the last time he had less. Only two goals as a member of Rusty Blades. So, again, this is why we were kind of pointing out. It's like, man, no goals for Furion. Really, nothing. But there we go. He's able to get on the board, and as a result, a 3 to nothing victory for Granite. They pull off the double on ZSC Esports. Huge result that helps propel Granite into the playoffs. Again, before tomorrow's regular season finale. Yeah, and a well-earned shutout there for Royce as well. Didn't face as much pressure as perhaps he did in that first game, but again, just he made the saves he needed, he needed to make, and that's exactly what you need from your goaltender there. And again, it's those two games for Royce were really, really good. Uh, looking at both of them, yes, Granite defended well in front of him, but he had to make some pretty, uh, pretty big saves at times, and had to be you know, well aware um, of a puck coming in from a, a variety of uh, awkward areas. But big, big performance out of Granite, four out of four points. Nothing for ZSC, who were only able to muster that one goal there. They just simply couldn't find a way to get going against this Granite team, and. Granite sensed that, and they just kept pouring the pressure on, kept stifling them, frustrating them, and they walk away with the 3-0 uh, win in the second game. Tremendous job there. Again, the playoff format is set just six shots for ZSC in that game. Rather surprising, but again, perhaps the most impressive uh, set of performances we've seen from Granite Gaming on broadcast this season. 
absolutely. That was, again, complete performance. And we saw them taking on a team, you know, in our last time covering them against a team who was ranked, you know, quite a bit lower than ZSC, and they seemed to struggle against them. So perhaps it was just the matchup, but, or perhaps they kind of found something else, you know, a different way that they wanted to play. Whatever they found today is something that they need to carry with them into the playoffs, because if you come out even for a split second, a little bit flat against a team like Atreids, against a team like Sawo, they will make you pay for it and they might never let you get up. So again, a big thing to whoever is reporting the results for that most recent matchup. Get that stuff filed in quick so we can have the most updated information here on cast because I am very excited to see now uh, what this playoff kind of situation looks like because then if I'm not mistaken, uh, again, that that seventh seed isn't isn't set yet. Granite might not have to settle for eighth. Uh, we will again wait it out for a, a couple of moments here as we get a look at the replays. And again, this goal here from Furion, just the bomb of a shot. Bar, bar down, down or back yeah. bar down. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was bar down. He he had to put you know he had he had to come out. He had to put some put a little bit of mustard on it, put some flavor on it and uh, make it look good for his first goal. He made us wait that, you know, so so long for it. I really like this goal coming up from Ekin though. I can't remember exactly who fed him that stretch pass, but it was excellent and then he just had this speed that was just no one was going to catch him. It just seemingly came out of nowhere. And there's that play again that around the net pass from Antonio Chizovi near identical to the one in the first game and you know, that's something that ZSC simply can't allow to happen. You can't allow someone to sit there uncontested in that slot and allow that pass to get through and just too easy of a shot of a shot and bourbon really no chance on either of those. So first and foremost, before we talk about the playoff situation here heading into our final broadcast again, I will remind you sin will be here tomorrow alongside Mr. B major for our final broadcast day of this season as it'll be ZSC in action one more time. They're taking on Feriestad. Very important games for both. Those points can still dictate where these two teams will finish. And again, for Feriestad, uh, playing with a, a lot of motivation sin after a lot of people kind of doubted whether or not they'd still be a playoff mm -hmm. team after factoring in the departure of those three members of Granite. Yeah, absolutely. You know, they were kind of... Uh plucked gutted if you will and they found a way to kind of uh you know sort of just re retool and and look at where they are i mean in an incredible position they get to take on zsc next you know i don't think they could really move up too much in the standings however but i mean again you want to kind of get yourself in in tune for the playoffs here good chance against a zsc team who may be kind of out of it but still hungry to stay out of those relegation positions and as well, again, Havu and Hreds, the regular season finale. As we'll get you a look here at the standings, what it means now for Hreds. One win against Havu will secure them the top seed in the playoffs. That's all it is. One win. And look at that, Sin. Over 100 goals now scored as a team <laughs> for our defending champions in Hreds. That is absurd. Yeah. We do know for Lunda. Locked in in the three seed IQ. We don't yet know. As you see, five and six, Feriestad and Havu. There's still going to be some shuffling there uh, for that potential fourth seed, which again would give them home ice advantage in round one. And again, now you see it granite above goons on tiebreakers. So we still have some shuffling to do there on that left hand side of the bracket. But again, those playoff teams are confirmed. So you look on that right-hand side, and again, Sim, we'll have plenty of time to talk about those playoff teams, but that right-hand side now is where it's a bit more interesting because, as always, we talk about it. 13, 14, and 15, those teams automatically uh, going to a relegation series, while as the 16th place team automatically relegated outright. Gordon, one point behind Conquer. Gordon plays 14th HV71 tomorrow. We have no idea who's getting relegated. Uh, right now between those three teams and HV71, Conquer, and Gordon, All three of them need big, big results tomorrow. Again, HV71 and Gordon playing one another. Conquer Gaming, their matchup tomorrow is against Roots. So not the easiest matchup in the world. No, absolutely not. And it could be... Uh, it's, again, until... It until the last, you know, puck has dropped to the last, a horn sounds. I mean, there's always something to play for here, especially with the way this season worked out. I mean, there's battles kind of everywhere between the 7-8, you know, those bottom ones, even with ZSC, YMC, or YMCA is locked in, but 
yeah, so ZSC it should be perhaps safe. But yeah, the Northern Ascendancy situation, who the heck knows? I mean, ZSC got to play Feriastad, and that's never an easy matchup. Again, not sure who has the tiebreaker there, but I mean, HV71, a maximum of 24 points. So in theory, YMCA, ZSC, you know, you still want to uh, yeah. get another point there if you're ZSC. And of course, Northern Ascendancy, if that is fully updated, which I believe it is, they can still finish with a maximum of 27 points. We don't know who those relegation uh, playoff spots are going to belong to, and we don't know who's going to be automatically relegated yet. There is still a ton to play for tomorrow, uh, certainly. But Sin, for now... That'll have to do it mm -hmm. for today. A phenomenal day of action. So much fun to get down to the stretch here and to see who will make it again for all of you. Sportsgamer.gg for all the updated information that you need heading into the action tomorrow. Again, you already saw it. Sin will be back. I will return for the playoffs and uh, simply can't wait for the start of that. And, of course, uh, as well, look out before the start of the playoffs as well. Uh, looking forward very much, Sin, to just being able to talk about all this again in a recap video that we'll have out that we always do. Uh, we're getting that much closer, of course, to uh, being able to get the voting going for uh, mm -hmm. like Rookie of the Year, which good luck in voting for Rookie and Goalie yeah. of the Year this year. Like Every aspect of this season is as interesting, if not more interesting, than it's ever been, uh, which is just fantastic to see. Yeah, absolutely. Parity keeps increasing. Every, every time we think we have it figured out, okay, maybe we got a new top two. Out comes Sawo and says, no, nah, no, nah, not so fast. Might be still a big three. And we're a new name into the hat as well. And Havu, with the way they sort of, you know, have ended up this season, what they've looked like at, at times playing, they really look like kind of a revitalized squad. It's just, it's a lot to be excited about heading into the playoffs. So with that, of course, you can catch Sin here tomorrow, but you can also catch him on the YouTube side of things. That's Sin for the Win Productions. I am everywhere at 2K24. We will see you all very, very soon. Again, make sure to tune in tomorrow. And again, playoffs start next week. How crazy is that? Have a good rest of your day and or evening. If you're a, a local, of course, to the scene, go to bed. It's late over there. We'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you very much for watching.